I'm thrilled to be here. Every time I step foot in Algiers Point, I'm thrilled. It's such a fantastic part, an important part uh, of the city of New Orleans. It is, for the folks that live here, you know, you like being a hidden treasure. And it is just an exquisite uh, reflection of the history of New Orleans. And you can't have two greater advocates uh, than Jackal and Rectel Clarkson and Kristen Gislason Palmer. <laughs> And so I thank both of them. They've been great partners. So I'm, I'm happy to have them uh, here today. Deputy Mayor Cedric Grant uh, and his team have been working. Vince Carter, who is running our capital projects, has done just a spectacular job. Vince, thank you so much for the work that you guys have done. Uh, Mr. Charles Brown, who is our great director of the New Orleans Public Library. The team of Charles, thank you so much. Uh, my, my best friend in recovery, Mr. Joe Threat, who runs FEMA. We turned FEMA into a word that we love now. <laughs> because Joe and his team have done just an extraordinary job. And of course, uh, to my right is Amy Hubble, uh, who is a daughter of Cedar Hubble, and Mr. George Hubble, who is a husband of Cedar Hubble. We thank you so much uh, for being here, being such an important part of uh, going back to the future. And if you think about uh, where we are now, uh, you know, Cedar Hubble was born in Algiers. Um, she returned in 1970 after George retired from the Navy. Thank you so much for your service uh, to our country. Upon her return, uh, she followed in the footsteps of great civic leaders who saw a need in her community uh, where there was a void. And she organized neighbors and worked really, really hard on making sure that there was a place for young men and young girls uh, to read and for the community to read. Uh, and so she organized a grassroots campaign and uh, we cut the ribbon in 1975. A young, good-looking, smart mayor, Moon Landry, cut the ribbon <laughs> uh, right here. And, uh, and Jackie Clarkson was a part of that effort uh, at that time. And so today, we make the commitment again uh, from the city to reinvest uh, in, in this particular uh, spot, which is a symbol of progress uh, and it's a symbol of preservation. You heard me talk a lot about it being able to balance both of those things and when it is appropriate and when it makes sense and when there is common ground, it is just a joyful occasion to be able to get back into uh, old buildings that actually can then be converted uh, because of the way they were designed and they're used into 21st century now libraries, learning centers, and centers of, of communities. This library has been closed since 2008. It was opened in 1907 with fronts from the Carnegie Foundation which is really just a wonderful bookend because a couple of months ago we opened the Rosa Keller Library with help from the Carnegie Foundation as well. So Carnegie has been with us for a very long time. It's a $1.3 million project. It will be completed on time, on task, and under budget. Vince, in the spring of 2012. Um, and again, it's a symbol of what we call place-based development, which is really making sure that neighborhoods have everything that they need to have livable, sustainable communities. Um, we have made a lasting commitment uh, to Algiers and to the West Bank. For those of you that were with me uh, the night before last, we had a fantastic community meeting. We talked about all issues that were important to the West Bank. We talked about the importance of Federal City, which is right down the street. We talked about road projects, drainage projects. We talked about flight. We talked about police protection and a whole host of other things. And we had the opportunity at that time to talk about the fact that we just opened Algiers Library, $8.2 million project. Federal City, as you know, is a huge economic engine for the city of New Orleans. It's actually a $750 million project. And I think people can now see what that beautiful vision looks like. Uh, it's not something that we talked about doing. It actually has been done. And Jackie, I thank you for helping lead that effort with NOFA. And I continue to urge NOFA and the ADD to come to an agreement quickly. Uh, and I want to re-urge that to Representative Jeff Arnold and to uh, Jim Tucker and to the NOFA. We'll get together, make that happen so that we can then do the next thing that's on our post is, is encourage the Marines uh, to double down on their investment in the city. That's critically important. Brecktail Park, cutoff center off the Monday Center, uh, the fire station, engine number 40, a uh, huge number of street projects that have gone on that are aggravating you because you're inconvenienced. Uh, I would suggest to you that's a wonderful feeling to have. <laughs> Remember not being inconvenienced after Katrina and Rita and just hoping something would happen. So that's a, that's a really good complaint that we get. Uh, now, we have to continue to work on drainage improvements, and, and of course we continue to work on retail uh, all over the city of New Orleans with the Algier Plaza. We seem to be 
um, doing really wonderful things. As it relates just to libraries, unprecedented. We have opened five libraries in the city of New Orleans in the last five months. Again, not that we've done it, it's not that we've done it. And there's no better example of the work that we want to do than, than this particular library because it represents so many wonderful things uh, that the city of New Orleans has to offer. And on top of that, just recognizing the work um, that the Hubble family has done for us and the commitment they made. Everything this, in this city stands on the shoulders of great citizens like Cedar Hubble uh, and George uh, and Amy. So we thank you all very much for everything that you were done. We're thrilled uh, to be here today uh, to start the construction on this particular site. And, and I thank all of you for everything that you've done. And if you help me uh, welcome uh, council members to the podium, I'm going to ask uh, Kristen to come first and then Jackie second, after which Charles Brown, uh, then Dip, uh, Cedric, if not, Vince, you're going to stand in for him. Uh, Joe, and then Amy and George, if y'all will make a comment, I would really appreciate it. Just follow us. Yeah, thank you very much. Help me welcome Kristen. Great. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry. Kristen's mom is here? Where, where, where are you? Mom, she's doing a great job. It's, now your daughter's coming up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, that's a really good segue into my comments, because I was just talking to the young, my young men that just moved into the neighborhood, and just thinking that we used to walk our children here um, when it was open, and, and this was such a vital part of our community, raising our kids here. Um, I see Colleen, another wonderful neighborhood volunteer who's a confetti kids parent with me, and we used to have puppet shows here, and arts and crafts projects here, and we also had computers here which a lot of our kids did not have access to computers. And there was always a line for computers. Um, so kids could do their homework and they could do their school projects. And so it was really with hardship that we knew that this closed after, you know, after the storm and it's taken so long to get here. And I think that speaks to the importance of neighborhood-based libraries like this because it really can service all needs in the community. And the wonderful thing that has also recently happened is what's standing behind me right now is our, our old Belleville school, which is now elderly housing. So now we have a whole other way of knitting our fabric of our communities together. Elderly, our children, our residents, and everybody really being vital in this place. And so I think that's really exciting. That's why we're here. Um, you know, I, I've often said, and I'll keep saying, and I'll keep coming to these when I, when I see the mayor here with um, the gentleman from FEMA. We know things are finally getting done. And it's been just absolutely remarkable. And to have this resource again will bring more families here. Um, it will absolutely make all of our projects a success because it is the people in this room um, that really make this community work. And I just want to thank all of you here. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Kristen, and yes, Ms. Chiselson. She's doing an excellent job. <laughs> and I consider myself an authority on this district. Self-appointed, and she's, you know, my first choice, and she's not only lived up to it, but exceeded it. But um, thank you all for being here. This is very exciting. Um, and I didn't help Sita get this library brought back. I had just come home, too. Buzz had just come back from the military, and I was busy making money so we could educate five daughters. And so, <laughs> but what I did help do was when I came into office in 1990, I helped ensure that this would be named the Cedar Dennis Hubble Library. And I told the story of the history of the library. I studied here as a child. It's very old. And, <laughs> and it's, um, this was the place of Algiers. You're right, Ms. Palmer, because this was the community center of, of my childhood. And critically important, not just to the ability to read and write, but to the social skills. I, mean, I can still remember what it was worth to come to the library. Think of being a child in Algiers, no bridge, and ferry boats that ran very irregularly late at night, or any time at night, and have no other, no other source of information on this side of the Mississippi River. This was essential. This stood for everything. And Cedar Dennis, as I remember her, uh, it meant the same to her. And when they, she and George came home, she went right to work. She was wonderful. And it, it is named in honor of a lady that stands for not only this library, but for what this library has meant to this community for over 100 years. It really is all about keeping Algiers its center of 
absolutely the most wonderful Mayberry in the world to represent. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Brown, and I just love him. He's the most wonderful library, librarian I get of all of our libraries, and to turn this over to him is a real treat. Thank you so much. <laughs> I promise that will be brief, um, but I would like to thank you all for coming today, and I know that this is a real um, wonderful experience for the residents of uh, Elders Point and the adjacent area to have your permanent library back. Although I have to confess, I kind of like the carriage house, uh, which is somewhat charming in its own way, but it'll be much nicer to have, yeah, I know, to have this library reopened. One of the things I'd like to just share with you is the importance that this library plays, not only in New Orleans history, but also in American history. Uh, Andrew Carnegie, uh, the industrialist and philanthropist, donated $50 million during the course of his life toward the expansion of public library services in the United States. And four of the libraries that he gave funds for are here, were here in the city of New Orleans but only two of them remain as operating libraries. And across the country, that's true as well. There were 2,500, over 2,500 libraries um, built uh, by Mr. Carnegie's uh, generosity, but very few are operational. So today, this library represents not only a landmark in terms of the history of the city of New Orleans, but also in America. And it's going to be wonderful to have it back next spring in full operation and providing the services and needs of the 21st century. So again, like you, I look forward to the return of your library to the Elders Point community. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, we're very excited about this project. I mean, we always like to do a little something historic every once in a while. We've been doing a lot of building new, but it's always nice to come to some place like this and, and um, restore it. And the first thing that I want to tell you is that everybody since you're swimming, they're going to restore the HVAC system. You'll be here in the air But there's going to be a lot of interior and exterior work, roof repairs to, to, to clay tile roof and the like. And it was made possible by the partnership that we had with FEMA and the contributions of youth citizens through general obligation bonds. And what we can tell you is that, you know, come spring, you'll have a new, the, this library back and restored for, for you to use. And, and as Jackie says, be a critical part of this community. It is made possible very much by our partnership with FEMA. And, um, and the person that I work very closely with in, in doing that is Joe Thread, who's here, the executive officer. Female, the local female office, so I'm going to turn it over to him. So, thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Thank you Mr. Mayor, City Councilman, um, the Hubble family for inviting me. Uh, FEMA just played a, a small part in the renovation of this uh, project here, but I can tell you it's always refreshing to work with professionals when you can get something done. Uh, between the mayor and Cedric, uh, Vince, his team, Every time we sit down, we will sit down three or four hours, take the gloves off, unbutton our shirts, take off the ties, and we'll lay out projects within the city and we say, okay, how can we get these done? So every time we can come cut a ribbon or we can break some ground, you know, it's always refreshing. Uh, within the state of Louisiana, I've still got 30,000 projects from Katrina, Rita, Gustav, and Ike on my plate. Uh, and my mission for FEMA is recovery, so we're going to try to do as fast as we can. Uh, with the uh, federal, state, local partnership that we formed a couple years ago, and we still had that mandate to move forward and just get the job done. We're playing catch up right now. We're at a running pace, and we'll continue to run until we finish this recovery work. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And um, I just, everyone who's been thanked already, obviously, my our whole family just, you know, is so thankful to everyone who's been involved. I think it's so, you know, obviously we love this library, but it's so important to mention, and, and I know most of you know that, that both this time getting, you know, getting this, this library back into the master plan and making sure that the renovations happen, and last time in the, in the 70s, it was many families and many individuals in the community, and it really was the voice of the community that made it possible for, for everyone to know that this investment should be Made. So a big thank you to everybody who has helped and, and raised voices and such. And also to, um, to everyone who has worked at the library and Seal Patterson, the library manager, has made an extraordinary commitment to this library. And so, you know, we, we're really thankful to her as well. And it's, um, and it, it's just super exciting for, for the whole neighborhood. We've talked about Alger's Point. It really serves just an extraordinarily large part of Algiers. I mean, Algiers is huge. 
and it's just the new regional library is absolutely beautiful, but it's, it's pretty far from here, especially if you're a kid or you don't have a car. And, um, and so this library really has served over the decades. Just Alger's Point, Riverview, all of Old Algiers, people come from really far. And so to, have, to get that back as, um, as a resource and, and as you said, as a sanctuary is, is just critical. So it's wonderful. We're really excited. Uh, the only thing I want to point out is that the library was renamed Cedar Hubble Library. A lot of old Algerine said, no, we want to see the Dennis Hubble. That's right. So <laughs> That's right. we know that she was a native, but who she was a native of right. Alger Point. <laughs> so they renamed it the Cedar Dennis Hubble Library. <laughs> Um, oh, I want to thank Marty Broussard for being here, our clerk of court, who has been a huge supporter of our library and our courthouse, and has allowed our has been head, head of friends of our uh, courthouse, which allowed us to have our little baby library over at the back of the courthouse. And it, this is a communion of saints in this town. I want to take this opportunity while I have the mayor and Cedric Grant and our Vince, our capital projects, and Joe Fred from FEMA. Right after Katrina, and I was probably the only one standing up here that was on duty for this area at that time, um, we were not told, and for a very long time, did not, it was true, we were never given the compensation that we would do in Algiers, especially to libraries and our regional park, Brettel Park because we did not have water, and we did not have the same devastation as the East Bank. We were very grateful we didn't have that devastation, but we still had, we lost like 10 schools, and you know, we didn't lose them to, to, not to zero, but we lost an awful lot more of Algiers than anyone ever realized. We sit between St. Bernard and Plaquemine, if you want to judge what kind of wind we had, and we did have destruction. But it took this team, it took this mayor coming aboard with his team, Capital Projects, especially Deputy Mayor Grant, and Joe Threat being able to step up and work with this team, as he told you, from FEMA, to turn the tide. And it has made the difference in Algiers bringing back both libraries, Bright Hill Park, to only name a few. Ladies and gentlemen, Algiers has a great debt of gratitude to these gentlemen. Thank you. Anybody else? You guys want to say something? You want to say something? <laughs> All right. All right. We're done.